Are frozen meals ever as pretty as their picture? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. We're wrapping up our 10 years of GMM celebration week. Okay, now the last time we did what we're about to do, we had frozen meal companies shaking in their snow boots. I'm looking at you, hungry man. And he's talking to the brand, not you, if you happen to be a man who's currently famished. Right, today we're gonna fulfill our duty to society by eviscerating frozen food packaging that's lying to us all. Like my mama always said every single time she looked at my young beardless face, it's what's on the inside that counts. So if what's on the outside of these frozen dinner boxes doesn't match up with its innards, mm. boy, are we gonna go nuts! It's time for a picture on a box might be worth a thousand words, but come on, this meatloaf looks like reindeer turds. We're gonna be presented with a series of frozen foods, but we will first take a close gander at the photos on the box, and then we'll each get our own cooked version of that frozen meal untouched. We promise that the mythical kitcheneers have not laid a finger on them to make them look pretty yes. or ugly. Now, then we're gonna compare the dish with the photo on the box, and like yeah. my mama giving me unsolicited advice on my appearance, every time I see her, mm. we'll both give each meal a score of one to 10 based on how well they meet our visual expectations. If the meal blows our minds, we'll tack on a bonus point. Okay. But if it doesn't meet our microwavable meals bar, we're gonna subtract a point, because we can and we will, maybe. Okay, first up, we've got Stouffer's tuna noodle casserole, mm. a dish Stouffer's describes as freshly made egg noodles, tuna, mushrooms, celery, and peas in a creamy sauce. Look at it, it's piled high on that plate. Now, we know there's not gonna be a plate. Let's take a look at what there is gonna be. Wow. It's okay. It's gonna be just a flat. Now, now hold on. Bread crummy pond. I don't think we can compare this to that because this has clearly been put on a plate and mixed around. I think you have to make an effort to to mix this a little bit because I, mean, I agree. I you agree. Know, it's a it's a oh gosh it kind of come. It's like a pancake all together. Oh. Okay, all right, we're learning things. See, but when you do that, then the breadcrumbs. I I I want to keep the breadcrumbs on top. The good news is I'm hungry, so I'm kind of giving it. It doesn't smell bad. I'm appetized, even though it's tuna which is not the thing that I usually want to grab from Okay, that's about as much work as I would ever practically do to one of these meals. And I, well, I've made mine into more of like a, a noodle fortress. Okay, it looks more like what we have on the plate, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, unequivocally, without a doubt, what you see on the box was not made from this. It was completely manufactured with, with the ingredients and a professional chef put it together because you can't do this no. Do this to make it look like that. On a scale of one to 10. I'm gonna say it stacks up to about a four. You look, I mean, it looks like leftovers. I can see all the ingredients, but they're yeah. like slightly different colors and it's not presented in a way that I can actually replicate even with lots of time and effort. I don't think it's as bad as you say. I'm gonna give it a six. Okay. Now let's eat it to see if the taste blows us away and makes us wanna add a point. Now I like a good garden pea. It's not bad. The first bite of anything it's that's not tuna tastes, tastes a like little. Tuna. Get, uh, it tastes a, takes a little adjustment. I'm not giving it a point or taking away a point. Yeah, me neither. It either. is what it is. It's tuna noodle casserole. You made the decision to buy this. You should swim in it. <laughs> All right. So Stouffer's tuna noodle casserole. We're giving you a total score of a ten. Next up, you've got Jimmy Dean's Biscuit and Sausage Gravy Bowl. Mm. Jimmy Dean's signature sausage gravy over a hot, flaky biscuit. I like okay. I like hanging with Jimmy. No, I'm expecting a bowl with a biscuit and gravy and clearly visible sausage. Let's see what we got. Oh, okay. I see, I see that biscuit in the middle. I mean, it is drowning in a sea of gravy. But now. are you gonna, I'm, you know, there's much more gravy in reality than there is on the box, but you're gonna complain about gravy? But that's not what we're testing. Not if it tastes good. It's just, um, I will say that the gravy is on top of the biscuit. Yeah. It's not like they put the gravy pond down and then floated the pontoon of biscuit on top of it. The order is correct. There's even is some it a, sausage is it a gravy, on top. Is it a gravy pouch or is it all together in there like this? It's all together in there. It's all together, okay. Because a gravy pouch, you could 
maybe replicate this look right here. But I mean, this is a, this is pretty good. This for is what it is. All being together, yours actually looks a little bit better. There's more biscuit visibility in yours. It may be up for an additional point because I I, I like the taste of a good Jimmy Dean something. Yeah, Jimmy you know? Dean. I've never right. had this. It's not super appetizing. I will say no. that when you get a look at that, I'm going to give it a five. It's better than the last one. I I think it's the same as the last one. I'm still giving a little more leniency. I'm also going to give this one a six, but I can't wait to taste it. Jimmy Dean had the mo had the best commercials. What do you remember about the commercial? It had him in it because he was a celebrity. It was like Jimmy Dean always does it right, or something like that. <laughs> Very fluffy biscuit. Jimmy Dean biscuits have a Jimmy Dean biscuit flavor. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you get anywhere else. It's very nostalgic for me. I think I'm gonna have to tack on a point just for the nostalgia. It's not that it tastes good, it's that it tastes like Jimmy Dean. It's pretty, you no, know, it is pretty good, especially get some of that sausage in there. Okay, you, put, you tacking on a point? I'm gonna tack on a point too. All right, that brings Jimmy Dean's biscuit and sausage gravy bowl up to a total of 13. Hey, the latest episode of Good Mythical Crew, the podcast is out today over on the Mythical Society. It features Ben, one of our first employees, who notoriously does not like to be on camera, but he did it for a good cause. Yes, you. in celebration of the 10th anniversary of GMM, Ben chatted about all the delicious behind the scenes secrets that only a nearly 10 year employee knows mm -hmm. about, from how he was hired, to the making a buddy system, the new GMM intro, lots of good stuff. Yeah, so Good Mythical Crew, the podcast, hosted by Chase, exclusively for second and third degree members of the Mythical Society, so join up now, mythicalsociety.com, because uh, you can learn something. Mm -hmm. Steve? Okay, so it's been delicious so far. I know it has, right? I'm actually risk restoring my faith in the frozen food community. Yeah, and I was not about to gag on the first round. This next meal oh. is Stouffer's Roast Turkey. Tender white meat turkey and stuffing in a homestyle gravy with russet mashed potatoes. Now I see that the turkey is nicely sliced. This is plated again. And pl yes, plated and presented in a shuffled card scenario with a drizzle of gravy. But we already know that this is going to be a tray of meat that goes in a tray of food that goes in a box. So again, I feel like you have to try to make an effort to see if you could even get close to replicating that. Okay. Oh gosh. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Is there, I don't even the see- The turkey is turkey. sliced. Oh. All I see is stuffing pieces. No, here, well, mine's got three very distinguishable, pe well, not distinguishable, they're all sort of brown. Oh, this is turkey. Now that, I mean, it Look is- Look how it all kind of comes off as a piece, like, it's like peeling off a scab. Oh, don't say scab! Gah! Peeling off a turkey scab. <laughs> no, don't put it on a turkey! I don't want to eat an injured turkey. But look at look at the vibrant colors on the box, and then look at the medium brown. Like if they, if you had a box of crayons, mm -hmm. what color would this be? What's a what's a name for brown? You were a crayon boy. Turkey scab brown. Turkey scab brown. I had to do it. Uh huh. This is not. This isn't holding up very well. I'm gonna give this one a three. And I'm. I mean, the turkey is sliced. Yeah, the and turkey the, is sliced. So it is sliced, but it's like little. They didn't put a whole turkey it's in It's like there. little shards of it. I am not happy, and scabs are on the brain. I'm giving this a two. Oh, okay, now let's taste it. How could it taste good? Uh, well, brown things are often very tasty. I'm even gonna give a little of that shellery in there. The only green thing. It's not bad. It really isn't bad. It's what you come to expect from turkey out of a microwave, but that is my friend bad. Um, I'm not gonna take away a point though. I'm definitely not taking away a point. You're gonna add a point? No, I'm not saying I'm gonna add a point. I said it wasn't bad. And but yet, compared to take another bite. turkey dressing and mashed potatoes that you can make for yourself, definitely yeah. doesn't compare. I, okay, I'm gonna just call it even. Stouffer's roast turkey, got a total score of five. Okay, this last meal is DiGiorno's Chicken Parm Stromboli, which is premium chicken, Parmesan, and mozzarella Ooh. cheeses, and zesty signature sauce and a crispy seasoned crust. That looks good, man. Well, Makes let's see hungry. how good it does look. Whoop. Okay, Trevor has already cut it for us, and when I take a look at this, is it actually cooked? Yeah. Yeah, it's warm, but <laughs> man, where's it's... the melty? Well, the funny thing is, is that the, the color again, like, 
just totally, it's. They're not, this isn't even the same thing. It's it, like a I vampire mean, you, drained it of its life. I feel like you, maybe you, this is just a Photoshop exercise at this point, that they're taking those reds and bringing them up. Yeah, you know how they do with the reds. This is nothing like that. Boosting them. The stromboli that I used to have in Greg's dorm room. You know, Greg's mom would send him a frozen stromboli and he put it in the fridge. And I played, didn't know that. We played video games together. Yeah, because you were studying in college. I was playing video games. Dang playing yeah. video games and then we'd stop and I'd be like, can I get a little bit of that stromboli? You, you mooch so hard off of Greg, man. Yeah. He's feeding you his mama stromboli? Yeah. I bet you made it, made him do it, to put it in your mouth. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> you put it in your own mouth? It didn't get weird. It was just me, me eating a man's stromboli. Uh, if all I saw was the back of this stromboli, I'd be like, oh, you've almost done it. I don't know. It looks like a really dried out cracker. There's no butteriness to it. Yeah, that's true. I really have my hopes up, just, and they're dashed. I mean, and look, at, time. look is, at that gap. I can get a full tongue into this stromboli without even touching it. I think I can get a full tongue in there. I think I won't watch. I don't I made recommend no, that you I do I made either. no contact with this stromboli. This is disappointing. I didn't even taste anything. I mean, because they set our expectations so high with this. But it's, it's still it, the same form though. I'm gonna give it a five. I'm I mean, gonna, it's, I'm it, gonna give it a three because I am disappointed. The only thing that's gonna rectify this uh, unrectified uh, thing okay. is, Get it out. Is, to, is to eat it. Okay, is this the one I tongued or not? That bread on the outside is hard to get through. It's so dry. I, I'm deducting another point. I'm sorry. I'm deducting a point as well. Man, okay. we started off so strong. I thought, you know what? Maybe frozen foods aren't as bad as I, uh, we thought they were. Maybe we were too hard on them last time. Or we went with some really nasty, nasty. But, but then they show their true colors. Or they have their dashed lack of colors. my expectation. So DiGiorno's Chicken Parm Stromboli ends up with a total score of six. But that's still better than the total of five for Stouffer's Roast Turkey, our absolutely lowest scoring dish. You have lost the meal. Uh, so, you know, we just want to give some advice mm -hmm. to Stouffer's uh, to make your roast turkey better so you can have more truth in advertising. Really, all you just need is a fresh coat of paint, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, Maybe literally. There you go. I think this is gonna you gonna gonna help you guys out nicely. I'm about to rectify this. See now, if I saw that, I think my expectations would be in the exact right location. And then if I open the box and saw that, I'd be like, oh, well, different color. Yeah, doesn't that like advertising? Problem solved. All right, so. You're welcome, Stouffers. We're here for you. It is the final day of our week of celebrating 10 years of Good Mythical Morning, and we've been told that the crew has put together something very special for us that, quote, showcases one of the most emotionally important parts of the show. Emotionally we, important. We don't know what that means, but we are prepared. Let's take a look. What exactly is a testicle? <clears throat> So now we're gonna go to Link. <laughs> what the crap? He hit himself right in the balls. Shepard, tell the people at home what you're about to do. I'm gonna kick you in the balls. <gasps> <laughs> that looked like a good one! Oh, there it is! <laughs> I've already done it today. I don't need to re-iron my balls. Yeah, that's, talk about squishy. Well. I don't know what it is, but I'm afraid that it's nuts. I'm gonna say, I trust his aim. Okay. Here we go, in three, two, yeah. one, go. <laughs> hey, that, it, it was the gun. I know this is weird, Link. What, the stroking of one's hair? I or the, or the watching of one's vasectomy, which is weirder. I don't know if you realize it, but that whole time you were eating a cow <laughs> We're gonna be plugging individual hairs uh, from various parts of our own body. Oh, snazzy! Oh, that was an eight. Okay, here we go. Three, two. Oh! You can like taste reproductive power. And reproductive power <laughs> tastes horrible. <laughs> oh! <laughs> 
Dink it. Dink. Oh, oh, oh man. Wow. My that balls was... dropped. Oh, did you hear that? The testicle is the last thing to remain in your mouth. Though. Yeah. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. I had a bag of peas on my nuts. On my peas. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey. That was a good one, son. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, son. Yeah, our balls have been through a lot with y'all. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun with nuts. And we wouldn't have traded a minute of it for the world. Except, for, I, don't, I don't know, a couple of those impacts. And as we just uh, demonstrated Maybe. in the fact that you saw our vasectomies, we actually don't need our, well, we kind of need our nuts, but not in their full capacity <laughs> anymore. So it's okay, don't worry about us. You know, and uh, I guess I'll put it in these terms. Thanks for hanging with us. <laughs> Yeah, it's like all these years. It's like you know, between the two of us, there's four nuts, but when you include everyone else <laughs> in the world, well, no, that's a bad analogy. Um, and it's exclusionary. Yeah, and we right. don't want to do that. Yeah, do just we? thank you all for being a part of this community, nuts or not. <laughs> <laughs> ten years of nuts, ten years of no nuts. I've just had a hell of a time. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. Hi, this is a big. What a wonderful family. It's all you guys. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to. Well, but I'm glad you did though. Click the top link to watch us discover which of our crew members are lying and which are telling the truth about their crazy cool talents and good mythical. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. So mm -hmm. I would ride my bicycle to Rhett's house every single morning, park <laughs> it in his yard. Link would come pick us both up. We would go to the studio and then we would carpool back home to Rat's house, I'd get on my bike and go home. And <laughs> this happened for like months. <laughs>